Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So, Innistrad, Crimson Vow, spoiler season, day three. Uh, okay, or maybe technically day five. I'm not really sure. I, I took the weekend off, okay? I need rest every now and then as well. Continues on. And what a morning it has been so far. We've already seen Necro Duality, a brand new staple for zombies. And yeah, I, I know that might be speaking a bit early to call it a staple, but yeah, once you see this card, you will realize that it is a very powerful new card for zombies, and it's going to make its way into a ton of zombie tribal decks. Regardless, this episode is not about zombies. It's about a horrifying dollhouse. Yes, that's right. Horrifying dollhouse is now a card... And it actually is probably my favorite new card from this set so far. So what exactly is this terrifying card? I mean, look, there, there's like an eye in the picture in the back left looking into this creepy dollhouse with these weird dolls in it. I'm getting distracted. What is this card and what does it do? Well, let's jump into it to find out. So first up, a big thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translation on this card. Horrifying Dollhouse is an artifact that costs 5 and it has pay 1 and tap. Exile a creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 0-0 construct artifact creature with... This creature gets plus plus 1 for each construct you control. That creature gains haste until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, really quick, I do need to bring this up because... I really dislike for the most part on most cards when they just slap on activate only as a sorcery when it's really not all that needed and with this card I don't think it's needed at all uh, but yeah they they did slap that on here but still that does not ruin this card for me I still really like it just wizards please stop doing that this card would not be busted or broken or overpowered in any way if you just took those five words off they are unnecessary <clears throat> anyways yes I really do like the design of this card and I'll get to it here in a bit, but I've got the perfect place for it in one of my decks. Horrifying Dollhouse helps you make use out of creature cards in your graveyard. And actually, the more of these creatures that you essentially turn into what doll constructs or whatever you want to call them, the more powerful they each become. So the first one might start off pretty weak, again, just basically being a 1-1 because you probably don't have any other constructs, but the further and further along you get, I mean, these can get absolutely massive, and yeah, they can be a lot more powerful than the actual, you know, regular creatures themselves. And of course, on top of that, when you're getting these creature token versions into play, you're getting their ETBs, any other triggers, you know, death triggers when they leave, you get their abilities, etc., etc., so yeah, there's a lot of really powerful things that you can do with this card, and yeah, there's some similar ones to this one as well, so let's jump into those really quick to talk about the comparisons, and then talk about, of course, what deck I want to throw this card in. So when it comes to somewhat similar cards in the past, we've seen ones like Offspring's Revenge, God Pharaoh's Gift, and Mimic Vat. Offspring's Revenge says at the beginning of combat on your turn, exile target red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except say 1-1 one, one against haste until your next turn. So obviously this one has a lot of similarities and differences to our dollhouse. This one does have that limitation of only letting you target a red, white, or black creature in your graveyard. Our dollhouse has no such limitation, and actually our dollhouse doesn't target either. Regardless, this one does trigger for free, so on every single one of your combats, you're going to get a free creature essentially, and you do have to pay for the dollhouse, though it is just one mana and tapping it. And obviously, if you've got ways to untap the dollhouse, you can do it more than once in a turn. And though the first time you do get a construct token, it will be the exact same size as this offspring revenge token. After that, obviously, they're going to get quite a bit bigger with the more and more constructs that come into play. 
Regardless, another somewhat comparable card is God Pharaoh's Gift. It says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do create a token, that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. It gains haste until end of turn. Now, for a 7 mana, this card is quite costly, but again, it does give you that free trigger, unlike, again, Dollhouse, we have to pay for it. On top of that, it is making 4 4s to start, but again, your constructs can definitely get bigger than that over time. And the last card that someone reminded me of was Mimic Vat, which says, whenever a non token creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do return each other card exiled Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard. And by paying 3 and tapping it, you get a token copy of the exiled card. It's going to get haste, and you exile at the beginning of the next end step. So, like the Dollhouse, you have to pay for that activation, but unlike the Dollhouse, that creature's only sticking around temporarily. But yeah, the Mimic Vat does give you access to your opponent's creatures, but if your deck's built around the Dollhouse, you can take more advantage of it than you would with your opponent's creatures. So that being said, again, let's talk about the deck that I have in mind for this card. And you actually might be familiar with that deck, because I actually did a recent episode on it with my new favorite deck. Go figure my potential new favorite card from the set, again, so far, goes into my favorite deck. Who knew? And yeah, you very well might have seen this deck in action in my most recent episode of Close Quarters, and that deck is of course my Gigantha and Karuga deck that's working on making tokens of creatures and populating, so yeah, a card that makes creature tokens of creatures is gonna be pretty good in that deck. Because yeah, with this horrifying dollhouse, you can get a ton of value out of creatures in your graveyard, like, I don't know, a Combustible Gear Hulk or a Diluvian Primordial, or you know, for a card that's out of my budget, but might not be out of your budget, Avenger of Zendikar. Each of these have some incredible ETBs, so again, although you're just making a potentially small or maybe even large construct copy of them, the ETB is what really matters here. Gear Hulk is going to have you draw three cards unless an opponent lets you mill three cards and then ping them for the total mana cost of those cards. Ironically, it's also a construct, so yeah, actually, if this is just on the field as a creature itself, it can add to your construct count. And then Primordial has, when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you can cast up to one target insert a sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. Basically, again, if this is in your graveyard for one mana, you tap your dollhouse, make a copy of this by exiling it from your graveyard, and you get to cast up to three spells for free. That's a ton of value. And of course, when it comes to well-known, very powerful ETBs, I've got to talk about Avenger of Zendikar. When it enters the battlefield, you get a 0-1 green plant creature token for each land you control. And of course, those plants aren't going to stay small for long because it's got landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus plus one counter on each plant you control. And of course, outside of taking advantage of ETBs with this dollhouse, you can also take advantage of creatures that might have LTBs or death triggers like Worm Coil Engine and Triplicate Titan. And Worm Coil Engine is actually quite expensive at around $23 or so. But yeah, just as Avenger of Zendikar is a very well-known ETB, Worm Coil is a very well-known death trigger, so I just thought I'd bring it up really quick and then bring up, you know, a much more budget-friendly version. Regardless, it has Death Touch and Lifelink, and when it dies, you get a 3-3 Worm with Death Touch and a 3-3 Worm with Lifelink. So get this in play, sacrifice it or have it die in some other way, get some worms, and then exile from your graveyard with your dollhouse to get a copy of it. That's, you know, Death Touch and Lifelink, which is pretty fantastic, and then have it die again and get some more worms. Or with Triplicate Titan, again, a budget-friendly version of this that might cost more, but it does give you more as well. We've got a 9-9 Flying Vigilant Trample Golem that, when it dies, you get a 3-3 Golem with, you guessed it, Flying, one with Vigilance, and one with Trample. So, yeah, of course, ETBs, Death Triggers, LTBs, other abilities and effects are definitely things that you can take advantage of with this dollhouse. That being said, there might be some other synergies out there to explore. Now, for example, I did bring up that, you know, Combustible Gear Hulk is a construct, uh, although construct isn't really all that popular of a creature type. If you happen to be running Urza in your deck, or Karn in your deck, or Melodric Summonings in your deck, you might have more constructs in play, which again can add to your construct count. Though, obviously, that doesn't mean, hey, just because I'm including the Dollhouse in my deck, that I should also just be including these other cards just for some miscellaneous construct synergies, but if you happen to already have those cards in the deck, that just could be some nice extra value. Again, the more constructs you have in play, the bigger those dollhouse constructs are, and yeah, they can get quite massive quite quickly. But of course, another way to get more constructs in play is actually just to populate, which can be an incredibly impactful way to double up on those creatures, and again, getting their ETBs or LTBs again. Yeah, that's basically where that Gigantha, you know, Karuga deck is built around, and I love it. So yeah, Rootborn Defense is actually one that sees a decent amount of play in Commander just as it is. It says, populate creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Most people have this in their decks, you know, just mostly for that indestructible and saving your team. 
But yeah, Populate is a nice extra benefit for those decks as well. But for this case, you're getting a ton of benefits off of both. Again, if you've got a Construct token with an ETB, you're paying three man to again, save your team, give them all indestructible and get an extra token copy of that, growing your constructs and getting that ETB again. So yeah, the very fantastic Song of the World Soul, which again, my entire Gigantha Karuga deck was built around, could definitely help you out too. It just says whenever you cast a spell, Populate. So when you cast any spell, pick, you know, whatever construct token you want to get whatever effect you want and continue to grow your army to make them all even bigger. And one more fun interaction that I do want to bring up is with creatures that actually care about their own power like Marwyn the Nurturer and Champion of Lamholt. Marwyn can tap to add an amount of green equal to her power. And Champion of Lamholt has creatures with power less than Champion of Lamholt's power can't block creatures you control. Now, each of these just start off as 1-1s, one and yes, you can get extra counters on them, but having them as constructs that grow based on the number of constructs that you have on top of being able to get extra counters on them can make them even larger. Again, not exactly a synergy that you just want to say, okay, I've got Dollhouse in this deck, therefore I need Champion of Lamholt, but it's just something to consider if you're already running, you know, Champion of Lamholt or something that cares about its power in that kind of a deck. Regardless, now that we've talked about cards that work well at the Dollhouse, let's talk about some decks, you know, outside of my Gigantha Karuga deck that might want to consider this card. And first up, let's talk about the Populate Commander, Girid Conclave Exile. Girid has, when it enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 green rhino creature token with Trample, and whenever he attacks, Populate, the token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. So again, if you actually get a big creature in your graveyard that again has a fantastic ETB or LTB, or again a trigger or an ability or whatnot, now you just, you know, make a copy of that with your dollhouse by exiling it from your graveyard. And then with Geared, you can actually populate that. And of course, you've got other populate effects in this deck to get you more and more of those. So yeah, there's a lot of powerful things that you can do with that. And again, the more constructs you get in play, the more powerful they all become. Next up, how about Quintorius Field Historian? Quintorius says, Spirits you control get plus one plus zero. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, create a three, two red and white spirit creature token. So now on top of exiling a creature from your graveyard to get a construct token, you're also getting a spirit token because again, you're making a card leave your graveyard. And of course, if you've got other token synergies in this deck, like Intangible Virtue or other things like that, have fun overwhelming the board. And of course, in a very similar way, there's Tormod the Desecrator, which says, whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, create a tap 2-2 black zombie creature token, and it's got partner. So yeah, it works in a very similar way to Quintorius, but you can choose whatever color combination you want, you know, up to three colors essentially because of partner. Last up, let's talk about Alibu Ancient Witness. Alibu has other artifact creatures you control of haste, and whenever one or more artifact creatures you control attack, Alibu Ancient Witness deals X damage to any target and use Scrax for X the number of tapped artifacts you control. So make constructs, swing away with constructs, ping for damage, and scry a ton. Regardless, again, yeah, I really like the design of this card. You know, again, except for those last five words, activate only as a sorcery, but again, that can't ruin this card for me. I think there's a lot of fun things that you can do with a card like this, again, especially in a deck where you're looking to make creature token copies of cards and then populate those and do some pretty crazy and wacky things with that. Obviously, outside of very specific decks like that, though, this card does have a lot of applications for a lot of different commanders and decks that can really utilize a card like this that's willing to, you know, help you utilize cards in your graveyard and, you know, make the most out of those ETBs, LTBs, abilities, etc, etc, etc. And at the end of the day, if you really just like creepy art like this one, where, you know, you have this dollhouse with some weird dolls in a giant eyeball, you know, looking, it's probably actually a regular sized eyeball because this is a, a dollhouse and it's small. But yeah, if you like this kind of art, that's also a reason I like this card too. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.